Hi everyone, it's Heather Nichols and it's time for another Make It Monday. Today I'm going to share the technique of reverse applique. Um, I've shared this also as a technique, um, just a photo technique on my blog, but I thought let's do it as a video so you can really get a look at it. We're going to use the dies instead of punches. You can use punches too, and obviously we're going to have to choose dies that are by themselves. You don't want to, unless you want to, but um, with your card design, but it probably will work best if you have dies that are all separate. Um, we're arranging them on our piece of cardstock that we're going to put on the front of our card and we're running them right through your die cut machine. And then when it comes out you can go ahead and pop the dies out. You can save those die cuts for another project. I'm using the Peace Be Still dies that coordinates with my Peace Be Still stamp set that came out last year. So through the holes then um, I'm going to have certain papers, whichever ones I choose for each one, uh, peek through, which is basically the reverse applique. If you were doing applique you would cut the shape out and attach it to your surface. So now I have turned over my piece of cardstock to the back and I'm adding adhesive because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the, the other pieces of pattern papers and attach them from behind so that they peek through the openings on the cardstock. And this is great for if you have lots of scraps of little patter pa pattern paper pieces um, to use those up. So I'm just really putting just a piece to cover that opening so it shows and then I'm just trimming the extra off of the edges. This polka dot paper is from the Pacific Vineyard pa pattern paper collection and for the dove in the middle I'm using um, the kind of the tone on tone one from the postmarks collection and again I'm just cutting something that's going to cover that opening and then I'm just going to trim off the extra that's there. Really unscientific you know way to get on the back there's no right or wrong way to do this part. I didn't have a scrap of this one so I'm just going to trim a little piece off of the corner and set it over that last snowflake and I don't like which direction it's laying so I'm just reattaching it the other way. And then you again just trim off that extra and then we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step of actually adding some stitching to the piece. And I apologize for the light. Um, I don't have a very good light overhead at my sewing machine, so a little bit of color color correction issues going on here. But so basically, what I'm doing, and I'm not worrying about being super exact because I'm just um, sewing around each shape. And obviously, the snowflakes are not easy to sew around. Um, you might want to use a free motion quilting foot for this. I don't have a lot of experience in that area, so I'm just winging it here with my regular foot on my sewing machine just pivoting and going right around the shape of the dove here and a lot of times when I do this type of stitching with my machine I'll go over it more than once it makes it look a little intentional if you don't want to sew with the sewing machine that's perfectly fine I'm showing um, here the, the faux stitching technique take your paper piercer and you can just outline your shapes that you put on and use a white pen to attach the holes. You could sew thread through these holes, hand sew around them too. It depends on how detailed and putsy you want to get, but you can use this technique. You could even just draw a dashed running stitch around your shapes as well. So don't feel like if you don't have a sewing machine or you don't want to sew around that you can't do this technique. All right, so you're going to have a pretty messy looking back. I'm backing up just a little bit so you can see more um, behind here. So if it's on your card front, you want to cover the back somehow. I'm mounting this up with some foam squares so you're not going to see that background. And we're going into the piece be still set so I can add a sentiment to my card. And I'm going to use the piece. I love clear stamps. I do this all the time. Will this fit here? And I fit the stamp into the area to see if it's going to fit. Um, it's hard to do that with wooden stamps, but with clear stamps it's very easy to do. Just inking that up with black ink and getting it to where I want to go. This little opening here is just perfect for this little piece sentiment. 
and then I added the be still underneath. I'm going to add some fine linen um, buttons to the middle of the snowflakes and um, I know many of you have seen before I usually sew my buttons on. It's easier to do than go look for my glue dots and they're more secure. I will use glue dots or glue sometimes but the majority of the time I'm actually stitching my buttons right to the card and as you can see it's very quick and easy to do. It's not like it takes longer to do this part. Getting the other one ready. And then we're going to do the card base. I did a ripe avocado card base and I'm just inking the edges with white ink. A lot of times I'll run my finger along it just if there's a little bit of extra ink just to kind of get it to dry a little quicker. And I'm inking the edges of a fine linen piece of cardstock that I'm going to use for a mat. And again, just kind of swiping that extra ink off of the edges. And granted, yes, I'm going to have ink on my fingers, but that's why you have apron to wipe your hands off or, or whatever. I'm going to attach the mat down first to the card base, to the card front. And then to attach the the stitched piece, I'm going to attach it with some dimensional 3D foam squares. So I'm going to put those squares on there. And then we're going to pull the backs off. Someday we will have easy to stick on foam squares without having to peel those backs off. Someday. We'll attach that right to the card front. And there we go. We would love to see your take on doing the reverse applique technique. Go to Nicole's blog to get all of the details on the contest and how to post your creations. And we can't see, wait to see what you come up with. Have a great week, everyone. Mm -hmm.